Since the dawn of time when humanity first made the decision to look up at night, we have been enthralled by the mystery of space. The movement of planets, the formation of stars and the appearance of comets are just a few examples of what has baffled us for countless years, inspiring everything from art, literature and science to religion, superstition and spiritual inspiration. Rare cosmic events draw our attention to the heavens because of their unique, almost sacred aspects. Some of the incredible astronomical events that we might witness in our lifetimes include comets, eclipses, supernovas, meteor showers and even the extremely special death of a star. You must see all of these celestial events, which can be seen using a pair of binoculars, a small telescope or even with the unaided eye. Get your telescopes and calendars ready as we present to you the insane space events happening in the future. The Total Solar Eclipse, August 2, 2027 Set your travel calendar for August 2, 2027 if you were born with wanderlust and a desire to experience the best that our planet has to offer. Yes, that will happen in five years, but there is no doubt that as soon as word of this extraordinary event spreads, thousands of people will be trying to make their way to the Valley of the Kings in Luxor, Egypt, in order to gaze upward at 12.02 local time. A remarkable 6 minutes and 23 seconds of priceless totality, when the moon completely obscures the sun and casts a moon shadow over Earth, will start at that same moment. It's the only moment when it's possible to see the sun's hotter, ice-white outer corona and the view is bookended by stunning diamond rings created by beads of sunlight passing through the moon's mountains and valleys. The longest remaining total solar eclipse of the century will take place on August 2, 2027 for those in the path of totality. The complete solar eclipse of 2027 will have the longest totality on land since 1991 and until 2186, although there was a lengthier eclipse in 2009 that was over the ocean and largely covered by clouds. Asteroid Apophis Near Earth Flyby April 13, 2029 an asteroid the size of three and a half football fields called Apophis, also known by its full name 99942 Apophis, will pass between the Moon and Earth on April 13, 2029. When it was originally found in 2004, the asteroid 99942 Apophis generated some concern and was briefly regarded as a risk impact item. Astronomers estimated that the asteroid's chance of striking the Earth was 27% when it was initially spotted. Thankfully, more NASA research has revealed that 99942 Apophis would miss Earth by 31,300 kilometers, making it the closest asteroid flyby in recorded history. We may get a fantastic opportunity to examine it as a result. The asteroid was initially given the designation 2004 MN4, but after more research, it was given the permanent number 00042, and later on, its discoverers gave it the name Apophis. The word Apophis comes from the Greek spelling of Apep, a creature from Egyptian mythology who was Ra's archenemy. But despite how perfectly apocalyptic it sounds, it's possible that wasn't the name's primary source of inspiration. Astronomy Magazine said in 2005 that co-discoverers Dave Tholen and Roy Tucker were major fans of the science fiction TV show Stargate SG-1, whose main antagonist was called Apophis. What kind of damage, if any, would Apophis cause? Very awful, though it's difficult to say to what extent because it would depend on the makeup of the asteroid. However, even most optimistic projections show how disastrous it would be. The close approach of Apophis in 2029 is not something to be feared, but something to welcome. The incident provides a chance to investigate the rock and observe how it reacts to Earth. The scientific astronomy community will launch a large in-depth observational campaign when the year 2029 and Apophis arrive, and so will novices. 
Some of the large telescopes that are now being built will be ready for use by 2029. When an asteroid approaches this closely, we have a unique opportunity to learn more about them. Earth will always be at risk from asteroids. But the more we know about them, the more prepared we can be to cope with them. Leonid Meteor Shower, November 2031 The meteor stream, often known as a meteor shower, is a stream of particles that Earth passes through as comets fly by. When the Earth specifically crosses the orbit of the Temple Tuttle Comet, there is a meteor shower called the Leonids. The Leonids are renowned for their history of storming. The Leonid Shower of November 1833, which occurred over 200 years ago, was the first significant meteor storm of the modern era. The advancement of the field of meteorology science was significantly influenced by that renowned meteor shower. One explanation for the Leonid's notoriety is this. Meteors were once considered to be meteorological phenomena like rain or snow before the Leonid storm of 1833. But researchers were interested. Why was the downpour in 1833 so powerful? A comet was found in 1865 and its discoverers named it Comet Temple Tuttle, which was discovered that the comet's orbit took around 33 years to complete. In November 1866, as some had prophesied, there occurred another Leonid meteor storm. Thus, the 1833 Leonid meteor storm contributed to the development of the theory that comets are the source of yearly meteor showers. We now know that the Earth passes through the comet Temple Tuttle's orbit every year. The yearly Leonid shower is caused by debris from this comet burning up in the Earth's upper atmosphere. A Leonid storm can only be seen when the comet is nearby. In 1966, during the last significant Leonid meteor storm, many people in North America observed 100,000 shooting stars per hour. Because annual showers, like the Leonids, produce all of their meteors from a single radiant point in our sky, some viewers of the shower in 1966 said that they nearly needed to hold onto the ground due to how strongly they felt the Earth's rotation. Although the Leonids have put on several magnificent displays, none have come close to the shower from 1966. The comet orbits the Sun in just over 33 years. The closest it has ever been near to the Sun occurred on February 28, 1998. The following anticipated perihelion occurs on November 20, 2031. Therefore, the next Leonid storm won't be here for a while. Mid-2061-2062, Halley's Comet Even though Edmund Halley's famed comet only comes close to Earth around once every 76 years, its sightings have frequently had unexpected effects on historical occurrences. For a significant portion of history, comets were considered to be celestial wanderers, atmospheric abnormalities, or signs from the gods that would pass through the solar system before disappearing into interstellar space. Early observers were fascinated and horrified by Halley's Comet. The appearance of the celestial visitor was frequently regarded as a terrible omen, and it was associated with anything from natural disasters to the deaths of rulers. When the English astronomer Edmund Halley published his Synopsis Astronomia Cometicae in 1705, everything began to shift. Halley discovered a startling new notion by tracing the movements of 20 comets using Sir Isaac Newton's gravitational theories. Three comets spotted in 1531, 1607 and 1682 were actually the same object. According to Halley, the comet would reappear somewhere in late 1758 or early 1759. Halley was ultimately shown to be entirely correct. Even though he passed away in 1742, his comet appeared in the sky on Christmas night in 1758. Its finding was heralded as a victory for Newtonian physics and scientific deductive reasoning. According to scientists, the officially designated comet 1P Halley has been whizzing around the solar system for as long as 200,000 years. 
Edmund Halley only recorded a few of his comet's sightings, but other researchers have charted its older appearances and discovered ancient references. There were also comet infiltrations into artistic creations. Giotto, an Italian painter, is credited with using Halley's comet as the star of Bethlehem in his work, Adoration of the Magi, after seeing it in 1301. The most recent return of Halley in 1986 was the first opportunity for scientists to investigate it with cutting-edge technology. The comet was observed through powerful telescopes from Earth, and five unmanned spacecraft known as Halley Armada made flybys of it as it passed by. One of them, the Giotto spacecraft from the European Space Agency, even got as close as 370 miles to the comet's core. The first of its kind high-quality photographs from the probes revealed fascinating details about Halley, including conclusively demonstrating that its core is a solid mass, mostly made of dust and ice. There is still time, because the renowned comet won't return to the inner solar system until July 2061, even if no space agency has yet to establish plans for a follow-up mission. A supernova explosion, the next 50 years. Oh, how lovely it is to die in the most spectacular of explosions while still a star. A star that has reached the end of its life and burst into a bright flash of light is what's known as a supernova. As a result of the explosion caused by the star's collapse, its outer layers are ejected, leaving a black hole behind. The precise manner of a star's demise is influenced by its mass. For instance, our Sun lacks the sufficient mass to go supernova. The news for Earth is still not good, however, as the Sun will swell into a red giant after it runs out of nuclear fuel, possibly in a few billion years, which will likely vaporize our planet before slowly cooling into a white dwarf. But a star can explode in a blaze of fire if it has enough mass. Supernovae have the ability to outshine entire galaxies briefly and emit more energy in a single instant than the Sun does in its entire lifetime. Additionally, they are the universe's main supplier of heavy materials. Supernovae are the greatest explosion that occurs in space, according to NASA. Supernovae were noted by numerous cultures before the telescope was created in the 17th century. The oldest supernova known to science is RCW 86, discovered in 185 AD by Chinese astronomers. According to their records, this guest star was visible in the sky for eight months. According to a study by the European Space Agency, a supernova will typically happen once every 50 years in a galaxy the size of the Milky Way. This indicates that somewhere in the universe a star bursts every 10 seconds or thereabouts. The last supernova, which burned with the intensity of 100 million suns, was one of the brightest exploding stars in 400 years and was discovered three decades ago outside of our galaxy. Astronomers at Ohio State University predicted that the next supernova in our galaxy will happen within the next 50 years. There is a 20% possibility that it will be visible without a telescope, otherwise one would need to use one. Quintuple Planetary Grouping, September 2040 On September the 20th, 2040, the so-called Grand Planet Conjunction will take place. The most significant day is September the 8th, when the crescent moon closely approaches Saturn. The quintuple planetary grouping, which occurs when all the planets are visible to the unaided eye, is the phenomenon that brings them all together in the sky. Even though the point is that all these planets are separated far from one another and typically spread along the elliptical line across almost the entire sky, or at least two-thirds of the sky, an observer will be able to watch all the visible planets in the sky at the same moment in events like this that will also occur in the 2031 to 2040 decade. The quintuple planetary grouping is when all the planets that were visible in ancient times appear to be clustered together rather than dispersed throughout the entire sky. 
According to the estimates, this separation isn't greater than 40 degrees, although typically isn't greater than 25 degrees. The fact that all the planets will be clustered together with a mere 919 makes the September 2040 occurrence so extraordinary. On February the 14th, 1186, a similar gathering was seen with a separation of barely 852, and there was no closer approach before 2735 AD than 10 degrees. The rarity of this incident becomes clear from this. The closest quintuple planetary cluster was discovered in 1952 BC and was only 420 away. On May 17, 2000, a quintuple planetary grouping took place with a total separation of 1928. The following one will be celebrated in 2060. Major Lunar Standstill 2024 to 2025. The major lunar standstill occurs when the vernal equinox and the ascending lunar node line up. The extremes of the lunar declination occur in this instance. The maximum and minimum declinations of the Moon respectively range from minus 28.58151 to plus 28.58151. The lunar nodes steadily travel westward due to the precession of the lunar orbit, eventually encircling the entire orbit after 18.6 years. The scenario is reversed halfway through this time, when the ascending node falls on the autumnal equinox. In this instance, the lunar orbit's 5,145-degree inclination to the ecliptic plane flattens the extreme lunar declinations. The Moon can also be higher than 18.29151 degrees north and lower than 18.29151 degrees south of the ecliptic plane. Since the Sun consistently achieves declinations of plus 23.43651, and minus 23.43651, it is not very remarkable for us. On the other hand, the major lunar standstill is rather noteworthy because it may allow the Moon to appear unusually high in the sky and for an unusually extended period during a given day. It clearly translates into areas where, unless the declination changes quickly, which is common for this time of year, the Moon may be seen roughly at its zenith and will be visible throughout the day. In the Northern Hemisphere, for instance, the Moon can be seen at its zenith further north of the Tropic of Cancer, while not setting further south of the North Polar Circle. Although the major lunar standstill is a one-day event, its effects can be seen up to one and a half years before and after. The next major lunar standstill won't be seen until September 2043, but the closest one will be in March 2025. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.